I'm Art Edgerton, and this is PTN. Lisa Coley is here with us. She's the town health agent, as well as the Pima representative today, Pembroke Emergency Management Agency. So she's going to be here and give us all the updates that came out of the uh, government today. Lisa. The first thing that people are going to notice is that child care facilities here in Pembroke are going to be closed. Um, we are going to make exemptions for first responders and necessary medical staff but um, those are even gonna have further restrictions. Now that I've said that, that was our announcement and the governor has gone ahead and made further announcements um, to that, that they are closing uh, childcare agencies across the state and they're creating a special licensing classification for people that are gonna give childcare to first responder families and necessary medical staff. And there's going to be a set of criteria that has to be met before the state will license them to do that. The second thing is we've canceled all personal care services, um, hairdressers, salons, nail salons, um, anyone, uh, massage is another good one to point out, any, any operating business that requires one human being to touch another human being is now closed because obviously when you're touching another human being, it is impossible to maintain good social distancing and it's almost impossible to control any bodily fluids that might occur at that time from possibly being conveyed to someone else, which is of course the last thing we want to occur. And the final one is all gyms, health clubs, and workout facilities, tanning and spray facilities. This is for the reason that people that take part in those activities are likely going to be respirating hard, in other words, breathing hard, panting, and or sweating, which means, again, they're releasing body fluids. That's what you're supposed to do at a gym. Mm -hmm. However, the sanitation in between client to client is next to impossible to ensure at the level that it needs to be to not transfer COVID. Um, I know gyms that are out there that are, are open now are, are being so, so diligent and, and all the salons are being so, so diligent. This is not a reflection on their ability or lack thereof to maintain sanitation. It's just the level of sanitation to ensure that surfaces and other things are not going to have COVID on them, that the next client, patient, workout person, you know, is going to come into contact with is, is next to uh, impossible to guarantee. You know, it takes professional cleaning. That's just something that no business can maintain client to client. All right. Um, so it's, it's kind of crazy still. All of these things are closed. So like, how long can this go on? Well, if we use the models we saw in China and Italy, this can go on for another month or two. The hope is, and, and everyone has seen the, the multiple articles cir circulating that say, learn from us and do better. I think we have learned from what we watched. Uh, a very poignant question I was asked yesterday was, is there any silver lining to all of this? Is there any good to come out of this? And I would say I'm personally grateful. I'm very sorry for China and Italy, but I'm very grateful to be able to learn from what occurred there and apply it here. And even though people are super frustrated, they're just going to have to understand that, that we're doing this. We, and I say we, I mean the government, uh, in order to protect people. And also the idea is to make that time frame less. The sooner we have this passed through and we can recover from it, the sooner we can go back to life as we knew it before. Okay. Um, I, I think you've probably covered everything that you have today. So. Wait, one more recommendation. Um, okay. Businesses that are 5,000 square foot or less must maintain 10 or fewer persons within the establishment and maintain social distancing. The reason is that is obviously the more people you get in a smaller space, the less you're able to maintain social distancing. Obviously, we are excluding large box stores from that. A store like Lowe's can obviously have more than 10 people in it and not have those people in close proximity. Right. Um, so that would be something that would be exempt from that. Restaurants, of course, remain takeout only, so they shouldn't be having too much staff in there um, congested together. And just one other note, we wanted to thank Stop and Shop um, for offering those special hours to our seniors. That is from 6 a.m. to 7.30 allowing those seniors to get in there when the store is at its cleanest. You know, it's been empty other than staff for a while. They've had a chance to clean. They've had a chance to restock. And we ask everyone to respect that. Let those seniors get in and get their shopping done. But someone did ask me, it's like, who's being mean to the seniors, making them shop first thing <laughs> in the morning? It actually isn't mean. COVID lives on surfaces. The longer that it's been that a surface or whatever hasn't been touched by another person that widens that window for the seniors, one, to go into a clean and fresh stocked store, but also the last time someone would have touched or handled things is at its maximum when the store first opens. So this is actually a, a, a really good safety measure for them. They might grow to like that and end up being have it every day. You know what? Maybe they will. Maybe they won't. I don't know. But I, I think it, it's, it gave them the maximum safe environment that a, that a grocery store could provide. 
I know another question that's come up, you know, um, with the two positive cases we did have in Pembroke, people are very concerned about those. Of course, we're concerned about those. But I've had a lot of inquiries on where are those people? Where did they go? Who's their family? You know, HIPAA laws strictly protect people's privacy, especially when it comes to medical concerns. We are not going to be releasing that information, who these people are and where they went. Um, but people have, have made commentary online of, well, how do I know to avoid where they've been? Please don't get focused on the positive tests we're seeing and say, I'm going to avoid where that person that had a positive test went. For every positive test we have, there is probably tens, if not a hundred positives out there. So avoiding the path of this one positive person offers you no safety whatsoever. Um, we know there's more positive cases out there. We know there's the walking well people that are positive for COVID but aren't exhibiting symptoms that are walking around touching things every day. That's why we don't want people walking around touching things. We want you to stay at home as much as possible. But the other thing is nothing replaces hygiene. What's my what's my word of the day? All right, what do Wash I always say? Wash your hands. This virus yeah. has a fatty a coating to it and washing is the number one way to get rid of this virus. It, that, that coating does not like soap. It does not like warm water. You can break its outer shell, or at least that's what the studies are telling us right now, and make it go away. People love the sanitizer, and sanitizer is great when you have no hand washing, but nothing replaces hand washing. Soap and water, Dawn and water, whatever you've got in that soap realm. If it cuts grease, it's probably gonna do a really good job with this, and that's gonna safeguard you the most. So um, one of the wisest comments, and I'm stealing it right off Pembroke Connect, um, as people were concerned about coming into contact with people, and I forget the lady's name, but it was a very sage comment. Treat every surface and every public place you go as if someone with COVID has touched it. And that was very sage advice because chances are it's possible that they have. There's a lot of people that are out in the recreational areas today that are yep. jam-packed because everyone's off work. Is that, yep. is that safe? As long as people are maintaining social distancing, it's safe. Another thing we've learned about this virus, this virus does not like the sun. Sun, oh, fresh air, and really? dispelling of the air. You know, in other words, um, kind of like we talk about poisons, the more poison in a dense area, the more dangerous the poison is, but parts per million come into play. The, the less the parts per million are, the less dangerous. Um, but everything we're learning about this virus or everything I'm reading about this virus, provided that the scientists have done their good work, this virus does not like the sunlight. Sunlight and the coming summer months and heat are gonna help do this virus in with us. Okay. I think that does it. Thank you very much for coming Thanks in. Thanks for having me. Thanks for sharing the information with the folks at home. I know they need it. I appreciate it, Art. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.